Hello all, Dr. Alsop here, and we will be reviewing the visceral components of the anterior neck with two very important endocrine glands, or types of endocrine glands, and a quick review of the location of the trachea. So let's get right into it. We will start with the thyroid gland, and we are looking at a straight anterior view with all the infrahyoid or strap muscles removed. You can see the carotid sheath contents on either side. And right here in the middle is this butterfly-shaped thyroid gland. I think glands are pretty distinctive in appearance. They are typically hard to mistake for muscle or neurovascular structures. In fact, you'll often see a large amount of vascular structures either heading towards or away from endocrine glands because of their very robust blood supply. The thyroid gland is composed of two lobes, so you can see the, these on either side, a right and a left, connected by a central isthmus, or kind of a pinched-in area of the thyroid gland. Now, around 50% of people will have what's referred to as an accessory or a pyramidal lobe. This individual does not have one but it would look like an extension of the thyroid gland parenchyma or tissue extending up from the thyroid gland sometimes all the way up to the hyoid bone. So it would just look like a gland that is going to be in this region extending all the way up towards the hyoid bone. Of course it doesn't have to be quite that long but sometimes you'll see it like that. Now in this particular view, the left thyroid gland has been reflected in order for us to have a clearer view of the posterior thyroid. This was done to have a better view of the parathyroid glands, and you can see those right here. You can see two right there. I have always found parathyroid glands to be a little bit darker than the thyroid gland, but not too much. It can often be quite difficult to distinguish the parathyroid glands. These glands may be found in a variety of locations, but are most typically located on the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland, like we see here. Typically, there are four parathyroid glands with a superior pair, so there'd be a superior one over here if we reflected, and um, an inferior pair. But there certainly can be fewer or even more. Typically, it's these superior parathyroid glands that are the most constant in size and location. With the parathyroid gland reflected here, you also have a better view of the trachea, which you can see right here. So trachea is located right here. The trachea connects the larynx to the primary bronchi of the lungs. The trachea will begin at the inferior margin of the cricoid cartilage uh, around C6. So the cricoid cartilage is covered by the cricothyroid muscle here, so you can't see the cartilage very well, but the trachea will be begin inferior to that. The trachea consists of around 16 to 20-ish tracheal cartilages, and you can see a few here. It's going to be this kind of um, wider area right here with a little bit of gray. You can see them kind of throughout. Uh, they are often described as C-shaped, so incomplete posteriorly, and these cartilages are connected by fibroelastic connective tissues, and I think you can see a little bit of that connective tissue clearly here, and then, um, then you're getting into the cartilages. So this whole complex of the, the connective tissue as well as the cartilages will make up the trachea. All right, so this should cover us regarding the visceral structures associated with the anterior neck. Always feel free to reach out with any questions, and thank you for your attention.